Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. And if you're new here, well that's exactly what I do do. Now today we're taking a look at a wireless microphone kit that's been sent to me by the manufacturer and I'm really excited about this kit. I've actually played around with it, I've tested it and I really, really do like it. And what we're looking at is the Full Aim 1000 kit. Now it comes in a charging case. Now this is becoming quite popular for manufacturers to send my wireless microphones out in a charging case and I really think it's a great idea because when you go out on location, not necessarily here in the studio, but when you go out on location it's great to have everything in one case and then when you want to charge it up you've only got to put them back in the case because it's got a built-in battery. Now once you've fully charged this case, so if you charge this case before you go out on location, you can actually take the units out and put them back in twice before the battery runs out in the case. That'll get you through a day, absolutely no problem whatsoever. It's about eight hours per charge. So you get a tremendous amount of use out of one charge. Now, when you uh, open the case, so the, the units are stored nicely inside the case, which is great. Um, there's also a spare compartment in the top here which you can put your wind muffs in, you can put your uh, cable in to connect it to your camera or your iPhone or your uh, Android phone. I'll go through the accessories that it comes with in just a moment. So on the side here, you've got your USB port for charging up the case. I mean, obviously that charges up the units inside the case as well. And it's got automatic shut off. So you can't overcharge them. Also, you can't drain the batteries while the units are in the case. So I think that's a really, really good design as well. Now, you've got the receiver, which is here. Now let's just take out the receiver so we can go through the receiver. Um, really, really well, uh, well made, actually. Um, I really like the construction. It's got a clip on the bottom here for either clipping it to a camera, audio recorder, whatever device you might want to clip it to. The on off switch is just on the front here and then that lights up. Um, and then you've got your left and right hand channels that show there. Obviously there's nothing flickering because I haven't taken any one of them out the case. Let's take one out and turn that on. Again, on the actual transmitter, there's an on off switch. I'll go through this in a minute, but just turn that on. And you know it's on because a little blue light, blue LED lights up at the top to show that you're on. And the other blue LED shows that it is talking to the receiver. So you've got a very, very good indication there what's going on between the transmitter and the receiver. So the person who's wearing the actual transmitter, I say wearing it because it's got a built-in microphone on the transmitter. If they're wearing it, they can clearly see the blue LED lights up or the two blue LED lights up showing that the, the uh, transmitter is talking to the receiver. So we'll come back to that at the moment. If I just put it there, uh, you can hear, uh, you'll be able to see the audio levels going up and down on, I think I've got the, uh, yeah, I've picked up the left-hand channels. You can see the audio levels going up on the left-hand channel there, which is uh, really good. So if you're the camera operator and you've got this on the shoe of the camera and you're behind the camera, you'll be able to clearly see the audio levels are coming through, no problem at all. But on this receiver, it's, uh, yeah, on the receiver, it's also got a headphone jack. So you can do live monitoring. You can monitor the audio from the device, and that is great. Now, obviously, it's preferable to monitor the audio from the camera, but some cameras don't have a headphone jack. And this is really handy, but the actual receiver uh, has its own headphone jack, so you can at least check the audio is being received by the receiver. You can't check whether the, the actual camera is recording the audio. You have to go by the needles on the camera. But if you've got a good connection between the receiver and the camera, that'd be fine. But it's great that it's got a headphone jack because there will be obviously uh, many occasions when you're using it with you know a little compact camera and you haven't got a headphone jack on the camera, at least you can check that it is receiving audio using the receiver. Um, obviously, you've got your line out to your camera or your audio recorder and it's got a USB-C uh, out, which is great because that will either connect it to an Android phone or connect it to a tablet or anything that has a USB input. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be USB-C. 
uh, but that will output audio via the USB jack. On the front there, you've got your power on off switch uh, and also your displays for your left and right hand channels. And it'll also show you what other functions you're in. I'll go through those in just a minute. So on the side of the unit, you've only got two buttons. So they've simplified the number of buttons on it. And I think that's great. So all you do is on the side here, you've got your two buttons there. And then what you do on this one is your DB setting. So as you push that in, that will change the DB on the actual um, unit. And you see tiny little digits that go up showing the DB setting on the channel that you've got. See the bottom, uh, it'd be a bottom left hand corner. You'll see the DB level go right the way up and then it will go down. So that is excellent because obviously some microphones, if you've got an external microphone plugged in, will be more sensitive than other lav mics. So you can actually change the output of the unit according, and also it will depend on the environment that you're in as to how high or how low you want that output to be. Um, so that is great. And it's also a, a good rule of thumb to have a, a higher output from the microphone and a, have a camera set to a lower dB setting. So turn the gain right down on the camera and use a higher output on the microphone. You'll get better results because some cameras have got quite poor preamps in. So with this, you can actually increase the output from the actual transmitters. Uh, uh, it's brilliant. Love it. And this button is a four position button. As you push that button in, there on the front here, you'll see in the middle, you'll see different settings change. So you've got, uh, let's go through them. So you've got, um, let's go back to normal. So that's normal, uh, where there is not creating any uh, noise filters. There's nothing being applied to the output from the actual transmitter. And then in that position, is basically a low cut filter. So that helps to cut rumbling sounds, could be fans, uh, refrigerators, that kind of thing. And then there's another one, which is called DSP, which is a specific circuitry uh, in there that helps to reduce ambient noise. So it could be traffic noise. It could be, you know, anything along that sort of thing. So if you are out on the main road or you're out in an environment like that and you want to reduce the amount of ambient noise around you, which is what you would want to do, because obviously the idea of a, you know, a microphone like this, it picks up the voice of a person that's actually using it. And then the last position is called KTV, which basically is like an echo one. It's designed, I don't really quite understand what that does, but that's for music production. So I guess if you're a singer, you might want to use that, maybe doing karaoke or whatever, you might want to use that position and push it in again, and you're back to your normal mode. So here in the studio, I would use the normal mode, which is set there, um, or I would use the low cut filter or the DSP mode, which is great for obviously getting rid of, you know, ambient noise and that kind of thing. So a very, very well featured uh, piece of kit. Now this particular receiver has three modes for recording the audio or outputting the audio to your camera or audio recorder. It's got mono, stereo, and a safety track. Now mono basically outputs to both channels as a mixed signal. So if you are using both transmitters, I'm mean only using the one, but if you are using both transmitters, it mix those two signals to, to one output to the camera. So the camera recalls the left and right channel as one signal as it were, it's a mixed signal. Then you've got stereo, so that splits the left and the right hand channel. So that's great if you're interviewing two people because you will have one person on the left channel, the other person on the right hand channel. And if one speaks a bit softer than the other and one speaks a bit louder than the other, you can adjust those levels independently when you edit it. Whereby in mono, you can't do that because it's a mixed signal. And then you've got safety track, which is great. Again, ideal if you're only rec uh, audio recording one person. Audio recording, if you only got one person it will record one level at the level you set and then on the right hand channel that'll be about half that level so if you suddenly start hearing clapping or that person starts talking louder you've got a safety track where the audio won't be distorted now how you set that up to be able to use those three different audio output methods in the bottom right hand corner you see there's an m that's showing that it's in mono at the moment. And all you do 
you hold these two buttons in, they're really close together. So you have to hold them in for about two seconds and then that'll change then to stereo. Now that's saying ST now, so that's changed to stereo. Um, and then you hold the two buttons in again if you want the uh, safety track, that's now showing MS. So that's record, gonna record the signal as a safety track, as I said earlier, one's gonna be louder than the other. And uh, let's just put that back to mono. That's brilliant. So it's a brilliant system from that point of view. I really do like that. And then obviously if I turn on the other channel or the other transmitter, now we've got both transmitters on. So you can see now that both uh, needles are moving. So you can clearly see as a camera person that both transmitters are working and they're communicating with the actual receiver. And that is great. Now on the receiver, they're both identical. So um, don't need to show you both. It's got the clip, so you can actually clip that onto a shirt, jacket, a belt clip if you're using a lab mic. Cause it's got an external mic input there. Uh, so you can put a lab mic into it. Um, and that's basically it. It's got USB out um, on the side there and um, obviously your microphone on the top there. Now this is how I would use this kit. I would just literally clip this to my jacket, to my shirt, uh, pull over in this case, as what I've done with this microphone. Now I've just got that uh, on my shirt like that. Um, obviously I can't let you hear the sound quality of these units at the moment because I'm showing you the unit, but in just a minute I will actually swap these out so you can actually hear how good these are because they are really, really good. Um, it has got a mute uh, feature on here. At the moment you can see both blue LEDs uh, glowing. If I just push that in, the, it's basically the power switch. You just hold, don't hold it in, but just push it in. When that unmute that, so that channel is now muted and you can tell that because it's flashing. So if you look at the receiver, you'll see there that the uh, right-hand channel, it's actually the right-hand channel I've muted. If you see there, the right-hand channel levels are not going up and down. So you can clearly see that the right-hand channel has been muted. And to unmute them, all you literally do is just push that button in again. Not that you see that clearly. Push that button in. And you can see now both the LEDs uh, fully on, which is great. So um, let's now just go through what it, the kit comes with. And this is where I find an exceptional value for money because it comes with so much. It's the first kit I've received that has so much in the box. And I think that is awesome. So obviously you get your one trans, uh, two transmitters and receiver. You get your charging case, which is beautifully made, you know, really, really nicely made case. Um, built in battery in there, as I said earlier. Packaging is great, really nice quality packaging. Not that I get excited over packaging, so we'll get through that. Um, and uh, then it comes with its pouch, which is handy because it comes with a lot of accessories. So the pouch is really handy. So let's move that out of the way. Oh, I tell you what is interesting, the instructions. I say, tell you why it's interesting, because the manufacturer has actually printed a proper booklet with the instructions in, in different languages, but so clearly laid out. Now, how often do we see that these days? Don't see that at all these days, do we? It's normally go online and you have to print it yourself. But, you know, they've supplied a really, really nicely designed um, booklet and the instructions are really clear. So, you know, full marks to them for that. Now, um, let's just take this lot out. Let's stick it out on the table here. Then we can go through it all. Right. So it comes with your two wind socks for the um, mic for the actual transmitter. So there's two of them in there, and the easiest to fit I've ever come across. So you've got obviously it's built-in mic on the top there, and all you do just drop it on like so, and that is great. That's fitted on. There's no fumbling around with bayonet mounts or anything like that. That just fits straight on. So it comes with two of those. Um, and then you've got two lav mics it comes with uh, and they come with the wind muffs already fitted to them uh, good quality plenty long enough cable um, so it comes with two of those let's move it out of the way and you've got your 
cable for connecting it to your camera or audio recorder. You've got your uh, USB-C to lightning cable, so that's good. And you've got your USB-C to USB-C cable for connecting it to a computer, a uh, um, tablet, uh, Android phone, whatever it might be. So there we go. So that's basically the kit. So I think most of you guys and girls are going to be keen to know how good the audio quality is. So I think what we need to do now is swap out the uh, microphone I'm using to the Full Aim 1000 and we'll see how good that is. And I'm just going to use the actual transmitter. I'm not going to put a lav mic in. I've already done a test with a lav mic. That'll be later in the video. So let's now plug in the Full Aim 1000, see what you think of the audio quality. I've now swapped out the microphone I was using. I'm now using the Full Aim 1000. I've got it clipped to me pullover. I can see the two blue lights are on, so I know the receiver is receiving the audio. And I think that's great from a, a talent point of view, but the person you're interviewing, he or she can clearly see that it is receiving audio. Obviously, if I had the lab mic plugged in, which is somewhere here, if I had this lab mic plugged in, I would have the, the transmitter clipped to me belt, put in a pocket, whatever, and then this would be hidden up me pullover. So what we'll do in a minute is go out into the garden so you can hear how good it is at long distances. I was very, very pleasantly surprised how good it really, really is, and I'll cover that when we get back into the studio from doing the range test. I also tested the lab mic. So obviously you can plug a lab mic into the uh, transmitter. Obviously if I did that, the transmitter would be in my pocket, on my belt, whatever, and the cable would be hidden. Um, but these lab mics are really good and it's all part of the kit. You don't have to buy anything extra. It comes with everything you're going to need. But the great thing with using a lav mic, as I said in my test, but you may have your own favorite lav mic or you might want to get a better quality lav mic. Well, the great thing with this kit, you can plug other lav, mic, lav mics into the system. So that is really, really good. So yeah, here we go. What you're listening to is the Full Aim 1000. Now I will put in the description of the video a few links. I'll put a link to my Amazon affiliate link if you want to buy it here in the UK. And I'll also put a link to Full Aim's website so you can take a look at a more detailed description of what this system can do, um, how flexible it is, and you know how great it is really, to be honest. you know. So I'm really appreciative of a company sending me this for review. I haven't had to purchase it. They've sent it to me for review, but they won't see it any earlier than you guys and girls see it. So everyone will see it at the same time and they have no input as to what I say about it. What I say is totally my own opinion. And my own opinion is I really like the kit. Um, so there we go. So what we'll do now, now that you've heard it here in the studio, and we'll come back anyway, uh, let's go outdoors so you can hear, see, hear and see the range test and you can hear what the lab mic is like as well. So here we are again. We're going to do the range test on the Full Aim 1000 uh, wireless microphone kit. Now I've got the, obviously, the receiver on my Canon EOS RP. I've got it set to mono and I've got the DB gain to two notches. Um, that should be about right. And I've got the uh, furry wind muff on as well, as you can see there. Um, that'll help to you know, stop wind noise and what have you. It should do anyway. So now let's walk down the garden path. As I turn me back to the camera, I'm not expecting the sound to be great. It should be at this distance, but when we get further down the garden path, I'm not expecting it to be great. I did do one wireless microphone kit where the sound was really good all the way down. Um, be interesting to see how good this is. Now, with my first stop here, I can still see the camera at this stop. Uh, so it uh, should be pretty good. I am facing the camera. So again, the sound quality should still be good and I should still be getting the signal because I am facing the camera. Uh, it be interesting to see when I turn the back to the camera, um, how well it is. Now, I will put in the description of this video how far away I am as we go further down the garden path. Um, but this one, um, I, I would think is about 10 meters. But I put in the description what that was. Now we'll come down here. Now I am filming this close up shot on my little Sony ZV-1, but the sound will be coming from this here, the uh, transmitter of a Full Aim 1000 
wireless microphone kit. Obviously, I've only got the one transmitter on, although the kit comes with two, but there is only me, so I only need the one. Um, I'm just using my ZV-1, just as a vlogging camera, but the audio won't be coming from that. Now, that was with me back to the camera, so you may not have heard any of that, but we shall see. I'm now facing the camera, I'm not just sure. I, yeah, I can still see the tripod, I can see the camera, um, but uh, you're obviously best off looking at the ZV-1 because I don't think that camera will pick me up, but the ZV-1 will because I'm holding it. So uh, let's go a bit further down. Again, it'll be in the description how far away we are. Now it gets tricky down here because I have to be careful where I tread. And also, ooh, I have to be careful what I trip over because it's easy to trip over stuff. Um, now, as I talk, it'd be interesting to see what audio is being picked up. Now, I'm going to go down as far as I can go. Now, most of the radio mics don't work at this distance. So if this one does, that'd be flipping awesome. Um, and the video picture will be coming from my ZV-1 because we know for sure that the camera won't be picking me up. I'm too far away. But it'd be well keen to see if your audio is being picked up on the Canon RP. Let's go back a bit further. Certainly haven't been this far before. Flipping out. Oh dear, oh dear. Definitely can't go any further now. That's as far as I can go now. So um, I, again, I am facing the camera. So uh, I'm very keen to see how good, sort of facing the camera. I am now definitely facing the camera. So it'd be very interesting to see how good this audio is uh, from this distance. I can't go any further. You can see there, there's a um, load of rubbish blocking that particular gate so um, I can't go out the gate could have gone out the other gate maybe but let's now walk back to the camera let's see how well this does and I walk a bit further down the other side so even go further away right okay so now we'll go over by the pond and just see if it's picking up the pond noise I have to avoid all these trees and apples on the floor and it's a right obstacle course. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. So we go over the bridge. Now, I'm constantly got me back to the camera. So now let's go face the camera. On the other side of a pond, this is a real distance away this is. I've not measured this before, so I'll have to measure this. And we'll see if it is picking up my voice from this distance. I'm further away than I've been before. It'll be interesting to see how well it picks this up. Even though the transmitter is facing the camera, it certainly can't see it. Too many trees in the way, bushes and so on and so forth. So let's go down this path. If I turn it that way, you can see where we're going. We go down here. Now I've gone almost to the other garden and um, we'll see if it's picking up this audio. Now, th these transmitters apparently do work at long distances. Um, I've never had one that works this distance, although to be fair, the um, small rig kit did work a very long distance, the furthest that uh, any of them have worked. So it'd be really interesting to see if this one works at this distance. Again, what's the likelihood, I'm gonna walk back now, what's the likelihood of any of, um, you know, you guys and girls needing a wireless microphone kit that works at that sort of distance? It's pretty unlikely, really. Most of the um, presentations of camera stuff that I do, you know, I'm very close to the camera. Um, but I, I, you know, I do accept there will be occasions when if you're doing, I don't know, news gathering or you're doing, you know, you might be interviewing someone and you want them to be, you know, quite a distance from the camera for effect. So I can see why it would be useful, but certainly not essential. So what we'll do now, we'll walk back to the camera. Now it should be picking up my audio fine now, shouldn't be any problem at all, because I'm obviously much closer to the camera. So um, now let's get up to the camera and what we'll do is go back into the studio and see, so there we go. So now back at the Canon uh, RP 
um, which is where the main audio is being fed into. Uh, and as I say, this entire clip will be the audio from the Canon RP. And you can see there I have got me uh, wireless mic plugged into the Canon RP. Uh, it's just plugged into the top there, um, if you can see that. Um, that is the receiver. You can see if we go around the back of it, <laughs> all these trees in the way, you'll be able to see the audio levels actually on the receiver. And that's a great design. But you can clearly see if you're a camera person uh, and you're interviewing someone, you can see not only on the camera the audio levels are working, you can see it on the back of the actual unit. And also, as I've said in the review, this unit has got a headphone jack. So if you're using a camera that hasn't got a headphone jack, then uh, that is awesome because you can plug headphones into the receiver to check that at least the audio is being received at the camera, even if you don't, uh, aren't able to monitor the audio going into the camera, if that makes sense. You can't monitor uh, what's being recorded to the camera on the SD card if you've got a camera with no headphone jack but at least you can monitor the audio coming into the receiver or you know the microphone receiver. So there we go. I did mention in the review that the kit does come with two lav mics. Now I'm using one of them now. I thought it was only fair to test these mics to see how good they are. Now the advantage with having an external input on the transmitter, you can plug in whatever lav mic that you like. You may even have your own favorite lav mic that you want to use because you know, you're uh, conversant with its sound quality. Now I want to test what these lav mics are like because quite a few of these kits don't come with lav mics. It's really, really good that uh, the manufacturer has actually included lav mics with this particular kit. And it also includes the little uh, wind muff that's on it to be able to you know, help against wind noise. But the other great thing with lav mics, they're a lot more discreet than the little boxy uh, kit that, you know, that it comes with. Now, the, the kit that it comes with, you know, the two transmitters is great. They are compact, they're really small, so you can hide them under clothing. But if you really want to be discreet, it's much better to put a lav mic on because A, theoretically, you get better sound quality, and secondly, uh, it's more discreet. So, um, you know, great advantages. I actually don't use lav mics, as I've said before. I just use the actual transmitters that it comes with. I just find it quick and easy to whack them on and job's done. You know, it's really, really good. The only other slight disadvantage with you using lav mics, you do have to be careful that the mic lead doesn't come adrift from the transmitter because it's just plugged in to the transmitter like that. Um, and I almost pushed the on button off then. Um, but you just have to be careful that obviously the lav mic doesn't come away from uh, the transmitter. But you can see how uh, compact that is, even with you know a cable plugged in. That'll fit on a belt, fit in somebody's pocket, and you still got your two um, blue LEDs glowing there, so you can see it is actually transmitting. Um, so yeah, a nice belt clip. Uh, so or you know, if you're going to clip it on the shirt, really, really handy. Um, but I say this particular clip um, is just to see how good the audio is using the supplied lav mics. Uh, so there we go. That's a quick audio test with the supplied lav mic. So let's go back into the studio and finish off this review and uh, let you guys and girls know what I think of the audio. And obviously you'll be able to hear it as well. So there we go. I thought that was pretty impressive. I use radio mics all the time, but normally at these sort of distances. But when you saw how well that microphone works, particularly when I had me back to the camera, I think it was really, really impressive. Right down to the end of the garden, even as far as me second path, it went right down even past the garage and what have you. And even with me back to the camera, works without a blip. I was really, really excited with that. Now the manufacturers do say it will work up to 200 meters. Now, I've not tried it as far as 200 meters. I can get as far as 200 meters, but I suspect that it'd be in ideal conditions, a uh, line of sight. But I was really impressed that it worked with me back to the camera. Now, you know, as I said in that particular video or in that particular clip, 
Uh, how often are you going to have a presenter that's that far away from a camera? I really don't think that's going to happen very often at all. Uh, but these mics can cope with that, and I think that's brilliant. So, you know, there we go. I will leave in the uh, description below a link to their website and to an Amazon affiliate link. So uh, if you want to purchase it here in the UK, you, you know, there'll be a link down below where you can purchase it from. And they are fantastic value for money. I think it's a great product. Um, highly recommended. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you like the content of my videos. I would really, really appreciate that. And stay tuned for more videos relating to video photography, podcasting, microphone tests, so on and so forth. Cheers for now. Bye.